Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and this gorgeous looking greeny blue slab of glass is the new OnePlus 8 Pro. And I've also got its little brother here with me, the standard OnePlus 8, which I'll come back to a little later in the video. So I've been using the 8 Pro for the past couple of weeks, I've fully transferred to it, I am using it as my main everyday phone, or my daily driver if you will, and you know what, I love this thing, but before we get into the specs and whether you should actually consider buying this, I think the headline that everyone was talking about is the price. I think most of us were a little bit disappointed to find out OnePlus has increased the price by £100. So where last year's 7T Pro would set you back £700, the 8 Pro will cost you £800, plus we're getting half the storage on the base model. In fact, if you want this one with 12 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage, uh, you're actually going to have to pay £900 or $1,000. That's 200 more than this, and actually even 100 more than the 7T McLaren edition. So at the top end, we're looking at $1,000 for a OnePlus phone, and that doesn't sit easily with a lot of people I think. However, bear in mind that the standard OnePlus 8, which I have here with me as well, starts from just £600 or $700, so there is a more affordable option if you want it, and as I say, we'll compare these at the end of the video. Now for me, the big two selling points for OnePlus have always been performance, it's always come with the latest processor, a ton of RAM, and most importantly the super slick Oxygen OS software, and then also being really good value for money. We could forgive that it missed out on maybe a few bells and whistles and that the camera was good rather than great perhaps, because in some cases it was two thirds or even half the price of competing flagship phones. So have we lost that value for money? Well. Maybe a little bit, but consider that actually the 7T Pro uh, only offered 4G, there was no 5G support with this, whereas all OnePlus 8 models are 5G enabled. And on the Pro model, they've also added an official IP68 rating for water and dust resistance. They finally added wireless charging, up to 30 watts if you use their charging pad. Plus we get the new Snapdragon 865, a smoother 120Hz screen, up from 90, faster RAM, an improved quad camera setup, including a slightly bizarre color filter lens, but we'll come back to that. We also get a much bigger battery, which actually came second only to the iPhone 11 Pro Max in my battery test, along with nice to have like Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.1. So to paraphrase the Dark Knight, you either die a flagship killer or you live long enough to see yourself become the flagship. And I think in every respect now, the 8 Pro is a proper flagship phone. So yes, it's more expensive, but there's a lot new here. And to be honest with you, I still think we're getting good value for money. And I think I'd recommend the base 8 Pro. 8 gigs of RAM and 128 storage is absolutely fine. And that does make it a better value option than the S20 Plus. It's about 200 pounds cheaper or about hundred less in the US. But enough about money, what's it actually like to use? Well, here's a lineup of a few of its competitors so you can get an idea for size. With a 6.7 inch screen, it is a big phone. And I think a lot of people will prefer the standard OnePlus 8, which is a more comfortable, manageable size. But for me, I think the Pro is just right. And the 20 by nine aspect ratio means it's not too wide. I do recommend putting a case on it though, as it is very slippery and the camera module protrudes more than before. So I'm a little worried it will get scratched. From the back, there's not really much new here, aside from a redesigned OnePlus logo, the color, and a couple of new camera features. On the Pro, we get three color options, Onyx Black, Glacial Green, and Ultramarine Blue. Although unfortunately the blue model won't actually be coming to the UK, but it's not the end of the world because I think this glacial green model is my favorite color. I never thought I'd want a green phone, although to be fair, it's kind of like a bluey green, but it really is a unique looking phone. And with this sort of glass matte finish, there's no fingerprints, no smudges. It looks awesome. We still get OnePlus's alert slider, which I'm a huge fan of, and I kind of wish more phones would just copy. But the biggest change here is that new hole punch display, in place of the pop-out camera on the 7T Pro or the teardrop notch on the 7T. Now personally, until we get the under the screen selfie cameras, I think the corner hole punch cutout is the best design. And while the pop-up camera of the 7T Pro was pretty nifty, I'm always a little bit dubious about the durability of mechanical sliders in phones, and also this has helped us get that IP rating. The first time a OnePlus phone has ever had an official IP water resistance rating. For unlocking the phone, we have the same optical fingerprint reader as before, which works reasonably well, although I tend to rely on face unlocking most of the time. I wouldn't have minded a slightly bigger cutout if they could have squeezed in an IR sensor, but that's just me. I do quite like the fact that the pixels around the selfie camera light up though, so you and your friends know where to look for selfies. But for me, one of the absolute standouts with the OnePlus 8 Pro is the screen. DisplayMate gave it an A+, and it's one of the few phones to offer a Quad HD Plus resolution and 120Hz refresh at the same time. Plus it has auto switch modes for both based on battery, so you don't have to worry about it at all. The screen does have a slight curve to it, and once or twice I've had a couple of accidental presses, but the vast majority of the time it's been fine. 
I think one underrated feature though is just how bright the screen gets. In blazing sunshine, I measured a peak of around 920 nits on the 8 Pro versus about 850 on the Galaxy S20 Ultra and just 703 on the previous 7T Pro. So it's one of the brightest phones I've ever used and will actually peak at 1300 nits when playing HDR content. Movies, games, just browsing through socials, it all looks incredible on the OnePlus. And paired with the top end specs and Oxygen OS, which in my opinion is the best Android experience you can get, I'd even say I prefer over stock Android, but that's just me. Altogether, this feels like the fastest and slickest phone I've ever used. Speaking of software, let me show you a couple of new features that they've added. The first one is motion graphics smoothing. It's kind of like the motion processing you get on TVs, which to be honest, I always turn off, but it increases the frame rate of the video you're watching. I've mostly noticed it in YouTube videos where a little pop-up will tell me that it's working and it makes say a 30 FPS video look like it was shot in 60. It says it supports Netflix and Amazon, but to tell you the truth, I haven't really been able to notice it. But as I say, in YouTube especially, it does work quite well. And to my surprise, I haven't turned it off yet. The other addition is Vibrant Color Effect Pro, which just stops the saturation and contrast to give you a little more pop. I tried it, but it became quite jarring when watching YouTube videos, going from portrait to full screen landscape, and then suddenly seeing all the color switch. It's a personal taste thing, but I turned it off. One area where the OnePlus 8 Pro really surprised me though is with battery life. I mean, in my experience, OnePlus phones have always had good battery, uh, but not necessarily exceptional. But in my recent battery life rundown test, it actually came out as the best performing Android phone. A slight caveat that the S20 Ultra was the Exynos version, and if it had the Snapdragon, it would probably have been a close contest with the OnePlus, but still, the 8 Pro gave an impressive showing. The combo of the bigger 45 10 million power battery, and presumably a bunch of optimizations, considering this can be Quad HD and 120 hertz at the same time, battery life is seriously impressive. Charging comes in the form of their Warp Charge 30T charger. It's the same as before, and in my charging test, 20 minutes topped it up to 45%, and it took one hour and six minutes to fully charge. By 11 p.m., I've still usually got about 30% of my battery left, which brings me to another new feature, optimized charging. Now you can turn this off, but by default, when you leave it to charge overnight, it'll actually pause at 80% and then resume about half an hour or so before your alarm goes off or when it expects you to wake up. So you're still fully charged in the morning, but it's not degrading the battery overnight as it maintains that 100% charge. So you can always turn it off, and if you do have a fairly predictable routine, which I think most of us do right now, then it is a good feature to have. Another first OnePlus is the addition of wireless charging, something most of the phones have had for a while now, but they finally caught up. We also now get reverse wireless charging for the first time, so you can top up other Qi enabled devices like maybe your earphones or someone else's phone, but again, it is very slow. Still, it's a few nice to have features that had been missing. Okay, let's talk about the camera because with OnePlus phones, in my experience, I think for a lot of people, it's always been the one area that's kind of let it down. It's never quite matched the other flagships from Samsung, Huawei, Google, or Apple. So are things better this time around? Well, the answer is yes, but not much. We get a quad lens setup with a 48 megapixel f1.78 main lens using a new Sony IMX689 sensor. It also uses pixel binning, so we end up with 12 megapixel photos. But in the camera app, you can choose to shoot in full 48 megapixels if you really want to. Then we have a 48 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide. As far as I'm aware, that's actually the highest resolution on any ultra wide camera on a phone. Next, we have a telephoto lens, which gives us three times hybrid zoom and up to a 30 times digital zoom which I think is all most of us really need, but it does fall short of the S20 range. There's also a fourth camera lens, but I'm gonna save that till last. But so far, my experience of the OnePlus 8's camera has been positive, but not breathtaking. Versus last year's OnePlus 7T Pro, in some shots, there's not a whole lot of difference. The most notable change is what OnePlus are calling their new 3 HDR tech, which has led to some much improved dynamic range. Here's a quick side-by-side -side shooting 4K video as well, and you can see the sky is noticeably less blown out on the 8 Pro. Now, if you'll excuse my slightly messy house, you can see just how overexposed the 7T Pro is looking out the back window. And it's the same thing with the lights behind my desk. It's not just in video either. In my camera comparison, again, you can see how well exposed the pathway is, the bushes and the sky compared to the others. And especially in this photo with the tree. Overall, the dynamic range is significantly better on the 8 Pro. We also get some fancy new all pixel autofocus. And to his credit, I found versus the S20 Ultra and the iPhone, it was consistently the fastest to focus. 
One thing I've noticed though is the wire balance can be a little inconsistent. Sometimes it gets it spot on and beats the other phones, and other times it's way off. The street lamp here is orange for example, and in some selfies and portrait photos, colours can look a little washed out. The nightscape mode works reasonably well, but in super dark conditions it doesn't hold a candle to something like the iPhone 11 Pro. We do get a dedicated macro mode though which works well, although quite honestly I've never actually used it beyond just testing it for this. Speaking of extra lenses, I've kept you waiting long enough. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to one of the weirdest new features I've seen on a phone in a long time. The fourth lens is a 5 megapixel photochromatic lens. In the camera app you'll see a new filter icon with the usual array of filters, but only when shooting with a rear camera you'll see one extra filter, photochrome, and this is where things get kind of weird. Most of the time it's a kind of grayscale image with some bright copper highlights depending on the objects. It can even see through some materials like my TV remote or the VR headset showing some of the electronic components inside. It's surreal, but kind of cool to play with for 5 minutes or to maybe show your mates, but beyond that I'm not sure who would actually want to use this, and the 5 megapixel quality is pretty poor. Video still tops out at 4K60, there's no 8K option here, but that's not really a big deal. Quality is good, especially with the improved HDR, as is the OIS and EIS stabilization. In low light, white balance was still a bit hit and miss though, but on the whole video looks good. As for selfies, the 16 megapixel f2.4 front camera is sharp and generally takes a good photo. However, depending on the light, I have found the colours, particularly skin tones, can look quite undersaturated. For example, my eyes in this photo look kind of grey, and in my comparison video too, I often ended up looking kind of ill. It's a similar story for selfie video, again colours are kind of muted and washed out. Plus it's still limited to 1080p, whereas most phones can shoot 4K with the front camera. So overall, the camera is better, but mostly just in regards to the improved HDR. The fourth lens seems gimmicky, there's still no 4K front video, and the colours in portraits, low light and selfies can sometimes look unnatural. To be fair, we have seen OnePlus make some significant improvements to cameras in the past via OTA updates, so maybe this will get better over time. A few tweaks to the white balance could make things a lot better. Alright, so this has been a pretty long review, but I appreciate you guys sticking with me. The last thing I want to talk about is this guy. Should you go for the 8 Pro or the standard OnePlus 8? Well, the key differences are that it's smaller, with a 6.55 inch Full HD Plus 90Hz screen, no wireless charging, no IP water rating, no telephoto lens, and the main lens is using the older sensor that we get in the 7T Pro, along with an ultra wide and a macro lens plus a smaller 4300mAh battery which I found lasted about half an hour less than the Pro. But we do get the same core specs of the Snapdragon 865, 8 or 12 gigs of RAM, and 128 or 256 storage. But crucially it is £200 cheaper starting at just £600 or $700. So I think on paper it does look like you're missing out on quite a lot, but in reality you're kind of just getting a 7T Pro but with a newer processor and the hole punch design rather than the pop out camera. So in my opinion I think most people would be better off with just the OnePlus 8. It's all you need really, I mean 120Hz, Quad HD+, uh, wireless charging, IP ratings, they're all nice to haves but not essential features. And if you are on a bit of a tighter budget, I think this is all you need. But if you want an all singing, all dancing, proper flagship phone, then yeah, the 8 Pro is the one to go for. Yes, it's a little bit more expensive than before, and maybe it's lost a little bit of its competitive edge, but the 8 Pro is still a fantastic phone. Oxygen OS is still my favourite version of Android, and I am going to keep using this every day as my main phone. So I hope you guys found that useful. It did take quite a while to make this video, so a thumbs up or maybe even a cheeky little subscribe would be amazing. Also, let me know which one you go for, the 8 or the 8 Pro, or if you think they're both just too expensive now. Thank you so much for watching guys, and I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.